Hey, good morning, everybody. I am live. I said that I would come in and show you guys the sunrise this morning from the view from my condo in Colorado. The mountains are so gorgeous. You guys don't understand how just peaceful I feel right now. It is ridiculous. But well, yeah, I are green and there's still tree. Thank you, make room. I love it out here so far. I'm not going to get to see much because I'm here on business. But, um, you know, it's just so peaceful and beautiful out here. I love it. And it's given me a lot of inspiration. I've been up since 5 a.m. And usually, no, 4.30. About 4.30 I got up because my clock is still on East Coast time. Hey, lovely. Thanks for joining. Um, so my interim clock is still on East Coast time. But it was just so inspiring getting up and seeing this beautiful sunrise and oh I do business growth strategies Mikey I help companies go from small business to growing into companies to running and scaling and growing companies um, my website is empowerme.org and it's kind of in disarray right now because we're redoing it but yeah you can check me out there um, but I love the inspiration hi Papito Brazil good morning the inspiration that the, the crisp air is giving me, I've been writing since about maybe six, and I'm about to go, thank you, and I'm about to go to breakfast before I come back and kind of meditate for my um, my business meeting, but I wanted to come to you guys, I put some things up on my Instagram today and up on Twitter about never quitting, let me try to shift over and see, about ne never quitting, um, a lot of times when we're entrepreneurs, hi Naldo, hi everyone just joining, a lot of times when we're entrepreneurs, um, sometimes it gets rocky. It gets very rocky. And I know that for me, I always tell people I fail very publicly because it teaches you the learning lessons. It teaches you how to become better. And it teaches you what you need to do instead of, you know, just going in and getting your hand burned and stepping back and say, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, I've had a lot of successes. I've had failures. And I'm very public with it because I think that from my failures, other people can learn. And I learn from other people's failures as well. And I don't think failure means it's over. It doesn't mean it's the end, especially in entrepreneurship. Um, I've run several companies uh, throughout my 20 years, 20 something years of being an entrepreneur. And yeah, there are times I wanted to quit, but quitting is never an option for me. It's not in my DNA. It simply is not. Um, in fact, there is one thing that's right never, never, never give up. Winston Churchill, great quote. Um, I'm going to quit sitting out here right now because it's cold and I'm not used to this. I'm used to being in sunny Orlando. So I'm going to go back inside because I feel, you know, I can't breathe as it is. But yeah, I'm going to come back inside and finish this because I'm, I'm a wuss. I'm not built for this. I'm born and raised in New York, but it's been a long time since I've been in New York City. So I don't, I'm not used to the cold anymore. But um, one of the things I wanted to share, put the light on in here was that, you know, in my failures, there have come triumphs. There have been, through failures, there were things that I've discovered about myself and about, oh, this light is horrible, things that I've discovered about myself and my resilience and my resistance and even new ways of doing things, you know. So I don't look at failure as a complete wash for me. It's a way for me to learn how to do things differently. And if you can look at it like that as well and Look at your failures and don't be ashamed of them and don't be embarrassed by them. They can help you grow, you know, and, and nobody likes to fail. I was that kid in school who was the A student. I was in the gifted classes. So anything deemed a failure to me was catastrophic. I just, I couldn't handle it. I wasn't set to deal. And I think, and, and God bless, I love my parents, I love them to death. But I think they didn't prepare me because I was always so used to getting and achieving what I wanted, that when I finally got into the real world, so to speak, and started experiencing some failures, I didn't know how to handle it. So I learned at a very early age, like in my 20s, I'm 46 now, so yeah, I'm, I always, I don't lie about my age, I'm very proud of all of my years, but in my early 20s, I learned that I had to fail in order to experience life. I had to fail in order to move on. I had to fail in order to understand what path I needed to take next. So don't look at the failures as a bad thing. They absolutely are not. I've learned from each and every one of my failures. Um, a lot of stuff I did publicly, that, um, a couple of things I failed publicly at. Um, but 
they're learning lessons and there's no rule that says there can't be some reiteration of what you try. Like my magazine was online from 2010 through maybe 2013 or something or 14. And I was so disappointed that I didn't get it to print. That was my main thing. Thank you for the hearts, giving you heart, lots of hearts. Um, I was disappointed in myself and I figured, oh, I'm a failure. This is a hard environment. I can't start a magazine. But you know what? It wasn't about whether it was print or online. People loved the content. I was bringing them, my writers were bringing them the content that were that was applicable to them and their businesses and their situations and everyday life. So to me, that wasn't a failure. Will I get to print? Eventually. I would love to because who doesn't want to have their own glossy in their hand, something tangible to hold? You know, I think we're more forgiving now because we are so heavily reliant on the internet and um, online is the way to go for a lot of things to consume content. Um, I had the pick my brain. No, you can't pick my pick my brain. The article was very successful in Forbes. It was a very successful book. It still sells. People still hit me up about it. Um, not a, a week goes by that people don't share it on Twitter or, or Facebook or, you know, just pass it on as an encouraging word to people who are service professionals who, you know, feel that people come to them and pick their brain all the time. The book, can, it's a it's a gift that keeps on giving. It keeps giving to others because they keep finding it and discovering it. And it's a gift that keeps giving to me because I keep getting, you know, sales for the book and without me even trying. It was that powerful of a message. And then I said, let me take it another step and create it the brain safe community. I was going to be an online community for people, for professionals to come to kind of get guidance and coaching and, and help and articles and resources on how to have people value what you do, value what you offer, value your skills, value your expertise and not take advantage of you. Well, it, it came, you know, it was OK for a little bit, but it failed because I well, my, part of it is marketing. I didn't have the time to really put what I wanted in behind it to behind it. But it failed. And I admit that I took it down, but it'll come back in some iteration. I'm not sure what it's going to look like yet. So for me, I've gone from being crushed by failure to learning to accept failure, to learning to adjust within the failure, to now learning how to take that failure and spin it into something positive. And that's what that's what it's about. You know, it's not the end of the world. And I mentor startups, uh, tech startups, um, through an accelerator program, and when they can't meet a goal or they don't get funding or something comes comes down that they don't like, they look so crushed. And I tell them it's not the end of the world. No doesn't mean no. No means not right now. And I shared that yesterday in my Periscope, my half blabbering Periscope, because I was so tired from the time zone and the, the air. I think my lungs are a little bit more adjusted now to this mountain air. Um, I think we're at 13,000 elevation or something like that. So sometimes I feel a little bit lightheaded, but... Pfft. But anyway, like I said yesterday, um, no doesn't mean no. This meeting that I'm having today, there was a no in the beginning, um, but it became a not right now, you know? So, and by, by faith, I happened to reach back out and it worked out and here I am and I'm going to have the meeting. So we'll see, you know, I'm, I'm cross my fingers, hopeful that this will work out and it'll be, you know, phenomenal. I know it will. Um, but it just goes to show you no doesn't mean no, fail doesn't mean fail. It means not right now, this is not the vehicle, this is not the time, or this is not the person, or maybe this is not the way. And failure means find a different way to do it. It doesn't mean you can't do it. So I just want to share that inspiration with you guys. Um, it's almost 7.15, so I have to get ready to catch my shuttle to go have breakfast and then come back and meditate and write and get ready for my meeting. So pray for me, guys. Wish me luck on my meeting. And wish me luck that my body and my... My lungs get adjusted to this cool air and this high elevation. So, hi, thanks for joining. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. So, I hope you found value in what I shared. So, if you found any value, hit those hearts, hit those hearts. And if you can, watch the replay. If you're just joining in, um, watch the replay because I'm about to sign off. But thank you, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.